This initial uh, portion of the video shows what a normal distended urethra should look like, uh, thoroughly patent, nice and pink. We're showing this in preparation for viewing the abnormal urethra in just a moment. So here we are in the vestibule of this patient. We can see that the tumor is occluding the uh, urethral orifice, uh, which we're approaching right now, and uh, almost 100%. As we enter the urethra and try to ascend into the bladder, we can see that the tumor is growing essentially entirely around the circumference of the urethra, some difficulty just passing the uh, scope into the bladder, and one has to wonder how urine was even able to pass at all in this patient. Now we're entering the normal proximal urethra. You can see normal pink urethelium, nice folds, and into the bladder, and the yellow coloration is the urine. Um, the urine and particulate matter makes it very difficult to see, and so we're going to have to uh, flush this bladder out with uh, saline to get better visualization. At this point, the bladder has been flushed. It's collapsed, and so you see folds of normal bladder going to distend it with saline, continue to flush as we do the procedure, and in a moment you'll see the normal vasculature of a healthy urinary bladder. We surveyed the entire internal surface of this bladder and were unable to detect any additional tumor growing within the bladder proper. Now we're backing out of the urethra, and we do this so that uh, we can localize the tumor and plan our laser application. And in a moment, you'll notice the tumor starting to fall into the visual path of the endoscope. We've got a little bit of bleeding here, not at all unusual with this particular tumor. Now you see tumor off to the right, coming in from the top, now from the bottom. As we back out, that the lumen of the urethra becomes entirely occluded with, with tumor. This white fluffy material is tumor tissue. Interesting presentation. This patient was that the tumor tended to form ridges as opposed to polypoid masses as we often see. As we back out of the urethra, we see the urethral orifice once again being occluded by this finger-like projection of tumor. We ascend the urethra once again, breaking loose any um, debris that um, will dislodge easily. Again, into the proximal urethra and into the bladder. We did locate one ureteral papilla, ureteral orifice, um, and this was centrally located. The Orientation suggested that it was the left ureteral papilla. Uh, we were unable to locate a right, and this is a somewhat unusual presentation, more or less in the center of the urethra. So we're backing out of the proximal urethra again. You can see it's distended thoroughly, patent, nice pink urethelium. Slowly backing out, and we will shortly encounter transitional cell carcinoma coming in from the bottom of the screen, then essentially falling into the path of the endoscope. These will become our targets for laser momentarily. As we back out, you can see that the transitional cell carcinoma is filling essentially the entire posterior two-thirds of this urethra, and then extending out into the vestibule with this finger-like projection. Notice the ridges of tumor coming in from the top of the screen and from the left side. And a fair amount of bleeding in this individual. We're going to take our biopsy samples and demonstrate how that's done. This is within the urethra itself. 
take a number of samples to make sure we get a, an accurate diagnosis. And you can see that this um, biopsy instrument, which is only a few millimeters in diameter, even has trouble finding the lumen. There's just so little space in here. And this is the polypoid mass at the urethral orifice. We're going to go ahead and take a biopsy of that just to make sure that uh, we identify this as tumor, if that's what it is. And you can see that the uterine orifice is at least 50% occluded with this tumor. So now we've started uh, lasing this tumor in the urethra itself. You can see in the center, a fairly normal urethra and the procedure is done from the proximal aspect of the urethra to the caudal aspect, dragging the laser back across it to avoid penetration of the urethra. Working from the center of the lumen outward, trying to widen this urethra and make it patent, as we know that obstruction causes death with PCC before metastasis does. See, at this point, there's very little bleeding, even though this is a very vascular tumor. And even at this early stage, you can see that the urethra is becoming more patent as we ablate the PCC. It's a small blood vessel that started bleeding. The diode laser energy stopped the bleeding almost immediately. Just to the left, you can see somewhat normal urethral wall that needs to be avoided as we laser the uh, PCC. Again, you can appreciate that the lumen was becoming patent. Now we're back at the urethral orifice. This is that large mass that was occluding the orifice. You can see some bleeding off to the left, and you can appreciate that this mass was nearly um, occluding the opening to the urethra, uh, probably a good 97%. Our goal is going to be to reconstruct this opening, kill the tumor, ablate the tumor to uh, provide a normal aperture. using the scope to see exactly where the tumor is located. You can see there's actually a ridge of tumor that extends out into the vestibule. Back at the proximal aspect of the urethra, going back very slowly. We have very little touch up with the laser at this point. slowly we can see that the lumen has been reestablished. All of this uh, brown and white tissue is devitalized tumor that we anticipate will slough within the next few days. We're going to see some blood clots. This patient did have some bleeding which will stop within a few hours. And you can see we have established a patent lumen at this point. Now we're going to go in and clean up that urethral orifice. You can see the blood vessels within the tumor shrinking tumor vaporizing as the laser energy enters the tissue. Working on the left side, trying to establish a normal orifice here, we're able to vaporize the tumor without causing collateral damage to the urethral wall or the vestibule. And here again, you can appreciate this is not a polypoid mass right at the orifice, but rather a ridge of tissue on the dorsal surface of the distal urethra that extended out into the vestibule. Laser is able to remove this with great accuracy and minimal collateral damage. Moving
and just inside to that ridge, ridge of tissue. We extend the ablation more proximally. Here again, it's easy to appreciate how this tumor formed a ridge of tissue. Notice how we're able to ablate the blood vessels, destroy the tumor, and minimize bleeding at this point. We are finishing up on the urethral orifice, reshaping it by ablating the tumor. Take note that this laser fiber is only 0.6 millimeters in diameter, so the area we're working in is very, very small, and the proximity to normal tissue is extremely small. Moment will show this area completely opened up and a normal orifice reestablished. The challenge will be then to keep this open by using chemotherapy and subsequent applications of laser energy. In this patient, because the tumor was located in the posterior urethra, the use of uh, ultrasound was um, extremely limited. So we had to rely almost entirely upon our endoscopic images. So we are just doing some fine tuning here. A little cleanup on the dorsal aspect of the urethral orifice. But we've essentially established 100% patency at this point. The tissue that remains is necrotic and will slough within a few days. Here we show the uteral orifice essentially 100% patent and the vaginal orifice just below it. You can also see that we can see up into the urethra as we have also established a patent lumen along the entire length of the urethra. Here we are backing out. We can see that the lumen is 100% patent. We're going to get a post-surgical slough, which will further widen this urethra. We've got some bleeding, which may cause adhesion problems uh, in the immediate post-operative phase. And so we're going to place a catheter in this patient as well for a day or two. Proximal urethra. Clean up if we need to on the way out. Nice patent lumen. Here we are at the urethral orifice, noting that we have basically a patent lumen all the way up to the proximal, more normal urethra. This is in stark contrast to the obstructions we met on the initial entry into the bladder. 